at a seminar, somebody asked me the question I asked you. Can you change someone who doesn't want to change? My answer was absolutely yes. And the person looked stunned at me like many of you did. Because traditional wisdom is somebody has to want to change. Bullshit. If they have to want to change, you're not very talented as a leader. What you have to do is know how to get them to change in a way that serves them, not just serves you. But that night, I started thinking about how do most people avoid change even when they think it should be a must, but it's still not. Like for example, did you know that 70% of people who go to a doctor and find out they have lung cancer, they are smoking, and the doctor says you must stop smoking, 70% continue to smoke? 70%, only a third change. Two thirds keep smoking, even though they're gonna die. And the reason is they believe I, what? Can't change, I've been doing this my entire life. I can't, I just can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And they say it enough times to themselves with enough certainty that they believe it. And once you believe something, as you believe, so is it done unto you. When you believe you can and when you believe you can't, you're right. Because once you're certain, you're only gonna find things that reinforce your certainty. And if it's not there, you'll make shit up, you'll make beige things around. How many follow what I'm talking about here? Say, ah. ah. So I was asking myself, how does someone avoid changing even though someone else would think it would be a must to change? And the answer is they develop a belief that it's impossible. Or they escape the time frame in which the pain is oriented. Now listen to me now. They escape the time frame where the pain is. And that takes away the leverage. If you got pain, well, you have to do something right now, you'll change. But what if you could jump out of this moment to some other time where there's no pain? then you wouldn't feel the leverage to change. And that's what people do. If they got pain in the present, that's what they do. They remember a time in the past when it was great, and go, oh, the relationship was good before. It'll be good, it'll be good again. How many follow them? Say, I. I. Or they jump in the future, because no one knows what the future is. You can make it up. You can be suddenly optimistic, even though you're not normally. And you go, I am going on a diet next week. There is no question I'm going to do it. I've never done it before, but I am next week. It's you escape the pain of the moment by having a solution in the future. How many follow this? Say, ah. So for example, who here in this room has ever stayed in a relationship way too long? A relationship you knew was wrong, but you stayed there. Raise your hand and say, ah. How did you stay even though it was painful? You got yourself to either numb it by going, it could be worse to be alone, or you change time frames. You went, well, it'll get better in the future. I'll, I'll, I'll turn them into a better man. Or, you remember the past. But the day you change, if you, whoever ended a relationship eventually like this, where you finally got out of it, whoever did this, we initiated it. Say, ah! <laughs> By the way, when you did that, it's because change was a must, and that's because you went, it's painful today, it was painful before, and it's going to even more, what? When there's no escape from the pain, the leverage is there and you will change. That's how it works. Now here's what's interesting. I, that night when someone asked me this question, I came home and it was December, and I'm a night person, I was you know, full of energy, it's midnight, one o'clock in the morning, so I'm flipping through the channels, looking for CNN or something, and I see the old black and white film edition of the Dickens classic, what? Scrooge. And I'm watching this movie, black and white old movie, and I'm going, look at this. It's a guy that doesn't want to change. Who didn't want to change? In fact, he had to convince himself that being an asshole made him successful. That being mean and tight, right, with everybody and being harsh was why he had a lot of money. But if you watch the movie, you see it's you know, midnight, and he's the only one still there. He's working on the books. He's very diligent. He's hard working. He puts in the hours of the time. He's successful because he's committed. But he got hurt years ago. And he convinced himself so that he would never be hurt again. The best thing to do is to keep out all relationships. And so sure enough, what did he do? He made himself mean so no one would get too close. So he wouldn't have to experience the pain. And so he created a belief in himself. That this is the way to be. This makes you successful. It wasn't true. And when somebody wanted to change him, he resisted change at all costs. Now, why don't we change? Or why do we? Because all of us do Whatever our brain links pain or pleasure to. If we link pleasure to it, we want more of it. If we link pain to it, we want to what? Come on guys, what? 
avoid it at all costs. What's really screwed up is when we link pain to something good and we start avoiding that. And we link pleasure to something bad and we pursue it. Or you link pleasure and pain to the same thing. You take two steps forward and three steps back and you make no progress. How many follow this? Say I. I. It's not what you associate mentally, it's what you associate in your gut. In other words, we call it neuro associations. What you associate to things in your nervous system, in your gut, is what controls what you do. So if you started Lincoln sitting on the chair you're in right now, created total ecstasy, many of you would not leave the room during the break. <laughs> if you linked it with total pain, you wouldn't sit down and stand the whole time. Overly simple. But if you link sitting in the chair equals pleasure and pain, you don't know what to do. It produces uncertainty. So when you change someone's new associations and you condition it, you change it permanently, you change their life. You change the way they feel, the way they think. So Scrooge, the man who doesn't want to change, did he change, yes or no? Yes. Come on guys, yes or no? Yes. How fast did he change? Come on, how fast? How fast? In one night, and how did it happen? Three neuroassociative conditioning specialists showed up in his house. <laughs> this is a and what did they do? These three ghosts took him and got him to fully associate to all the what? Pain. His behaviors, his attitudes, his beliefs he created, everybody cares about, including himself, in the past, what else? Present, and what else? And when he felt pain, 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 everywhere, there's nowhere to go, then it became an absolute what? To change, and he changed how fast? And especially when he saw, oh my God, I have a second chance. And by the way, when he felt that second chance, when he got out of pain, he saw he had a freedom to choose anew. Make a sound of what he felt like. Make a sound. Come on, in your body. Nice and <laughs> You are going to go through the Dickens process today. You are going to discover what are the three most limiting beliefs in your life. They may even believe that intellectually you know better, but emotionally they still control you. Who here can relate to this? How many got a belief that you know intellectually, you know it's stupid, or you know it's not true, but at times it, it gets you? Who can relate to this? Say, ah. ah. That's because it's not just in your head, it's in your nervous system. Right? So you're going to discover what are the three most limiting beliefs in your life, and we are going to annihilate them, destroy them. We are going to go through a process in your nervous system that will scramble them. To do that, though, we've got to get enough what? Average. So the change in the must, then we're going to scramble the hell out of them. Then there'll be an opening, like Scrooge waking up, and it's still Christmas morning, and you'll be euphoric, and you'll be able to create a new set of beliefs that your brain will grab hold and take inside. Now, what I'm describing to you as intellectual, what you're going to do is going to be quite physical, and it will be something that will affect your life for years to come. I see people 10 years, 15 years after the course, and they still talk about how this day changed their life in this process specifically. Now,